Oh, hello. Right then. This is number four in the um, award-winning Roger Lang as seen on TV series. I've got a dog between my legs, which is a novelty I've not experienced before. Here she comes, little Jimmy. Well, not so little. But Gemma looks quite slim when you compare her to Millie, who I'll be showing you later on. Your breath stinks, Jimmy. You stink. You stink, but I love you. Yes. You shift your bot and you move down there. Right. It's Saturday the... Um... Oh, all right. They all want to be on television. Hello, Ellie Pelly. As soon as I start talking to myself, I think, bloody hell, what's he up to? Ah, and here comes one you've not seen before. His name's Teddy. All right, you sit there. Come here, Ted's. Come on. Oh, you little baby. Oh, he's a cutie. Yeah. That's Teddy. And you're Ellie's little boy. This is your little boy. He's twice the size of Ella. Yes. Sasha, um, I don't think there's enough room. Oh, God. Yes, hello, honey. <laughs> All right, you go up there then. Oh, bloody heck. There you go. Here comes Millie. Oh, I didn't Ooh. want to show you all the pups yet. Hey! Oh, God, she weighs a ton. <laughs> She's a great big fat lump, is Mill. Oh, there we are then. Right, may I continue, please? Thank you. The only one's missing is Sasha. She's over on the sofa. And Solo, she's on the floor. <laughs> you. Right, I've got a list here, because all TV professionals have a running order. Um, so I've just sort of noted down a few things I want to cover in this video. Of course, 50% of it will be to do with Hoovers. Oh, God, people keep walking by. Bloody hell, there's an old git out there. It'll still take about 10 minutes to pass the house. I haven't got my watch on, what am I looking at my wrist for? Right, yes, well the first uh, four things on my list are to do with hoovers. Uh, number 12 has got to do with hoovers. Number 16. But there's quite a lot in between the hoover bits, so uh, I'm sure there'll be something to entertain you. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Right, I think I'll do, yeah. What was I going to say? Yeah, it's Saturday. I think it's the 12th of October. Mummy and Daddy have gone to um, a dog show in Driffield. So they should be gone most of the day. So I thought, this is the ideal time to get this video started. Because once you've started it, you want to finish it. You know what I mean? Um, it is a bit overcast. It's a bit dull, so I've got this light on. So I don't think I'll be doing much sort of live filming today because the weather's not good enough. And it's no point showing Bishop Thorpe today either because, as I said, the weather's not good enough. I might pop out later to the co-op. The co-op up our street. Well, it's up, it, up the main street is co-op. Because I've got my gold key card, you see, so I can buy lots of sweeties and cakes and pop. And I don't have to pay for it. Well, I do eventually, of course, but, um, don't we all? But I look as, you know, look at it like this. I mean, if you've run up huge bills, I mean, you could always die tomorrow, and then you'd have to pay them off. So that's, that's, that's my philosophy, isn't it? <sighs> right, the first thing I'm going to do today, I thought it was quite a good idea, I don't know if you'll agree. Now, I know you've got a Hoover Turbo Master Total System, and by now, it may be in need of a, a bit of a service, you know, to improve its performance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my model and show you step by step in the DIY tradition how to fit a new belt. You might have done this already, but I'm showing you properly, you know. I'll show you how to fit a new belt, fit a new headlight, uh, which I believe you've got. I remember sending, well, not me. Tina Turbo Power sent uh, Turbo Master it for Christmas, I believe, didn't she? Uh, anyway, yeah. 
what else will I be showing? How to unblock a blockage if a blockage occurs, which is not very frequent unless you don't empty the bag. Hello, yes, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> right, yes. I'll also show you how to change the agitator, um, which lasts years and years. I've never had to buy one. But I'll show you how to change that and um, generally give it a good old spruce up. I think I'll do that now because I'm just going to start, you know, moaning on and on. Yes, Teddy. Teddy. He's a big crybaby, he is. Aren't you? Look at him. You're a beautiful little baby. But you've got one problem. We can't keep you because you've got one little thing down there. Haven't you? And because of that, you've got to go to Auntie Mary's. But my favourite, Rupert, he went and, you know, the first one to go, well, he was the only one to go, because, as you know, Ella only had three, Rupert, Millie and Teddy. But at least we'll see Teddy, because he's only going to be around the corner and he'll come in to see us. And, of course, we're keeping this fat lump. I've got some good footage, actually, of them as little tiny puppies playing. And I'll include that. Um, of course, I'm going to include some Simpsons. I think if I've got time, I'll, I'll do two episodes. Um, it depends how much more I've got to do. I love them. I mean, you might need a couple of episodes to sort of get to know them. But I'll try and choose two episodes out of, I don't know, I've got about 20 odd. I mean, they're all good in a way. But uh, I'll try and choose a couple I think are outstanding. And I'll show you all the Simpsons bits I've bought so far. Um, of course, now I've got satellite, there's an awful lot I can show you that you won't have seen before. Little clips of programmes, so I'll be showing you them. Some funny things, some weird things, and some... Some other things. There's quite a lot of unusual stuff on satellite. Especially the German channels and the Dutch. I love Dutch. Listening to Dutch is fantastic, you know? It's all... Um, I can't do it, but they do a lot of... And it sounds really good. Yes, I've got Bishop Thorpe written down here. A dubbed programme, well, these Roger Lang has seen on TV series would not be complete without the amateurish dubbed programming. I've got an idea of what programme to use, but I'm not too sure. It involves a Cockney accent. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yes, that video, of course, you wanted to see, load of rubbish it is. The video I made took me, well, took me a few days to do. It wasn't too bad, considering it was only me first. Uh, tour of House and Garden, yeah, I'll just do a quick look round again. Nothing much has changed, I don't think. And of course, um, I have MTV and they show a lot of prints. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to record a lot of MTV and sort of select clips that I think you might like. Certainly prints, but there'll be quite a lot of other clips that I can, you know, show you. Oh, that's about it. Right, so next on Roger Lang, as seen on TV 4, it's time for the Hoover Turbo Master service tips. See you later. Oh, right, I'm back. I'm back. Hang on. I haven't got the I have got the mic in the right position. That's better. There, sorry about that. Here it is then, the Hoover Turbo Master Total System. It's still a current model, it's not been revamped, revitalized or anything really. It has its plus points and it also has its minus points as well. I think you'll agree the plus points are its performance. As long as you look after it and change bags and belts regularly, it'll really pick up the dirt very well. Um, that really, to me, is the only plus point, its performance. It has a few negatives, like its noise level, its weight, uh, and sometimes, I don't know if yours does that, when you've got it in cleaning tool mode, when you've got the little lever to the front, 
it can sometimes slip back if you block the hose end off, you know what I mean, if that blocks off with anything. This nozzle on mine sometimes slips back into carpet cleaning mode. But uh, apart from that, it's okay. Right then. Now, you've obviously seen inside here the bag compartment. Let's take out my bag. A bit of dust has spilled out, unfortunately. <laughs> to empty a blockage on this uh, particular model is extremely easy. Now then, let's show you. This is the support tube that supports the bag. Um, and of course the dust goes up here and into the bag like that. I'll just uh, blow this dust out a minute. <gasps> Right, if you can see this, you can't, so I'm really going to have to get a bit closer. Um, no, I won't. I can't be bothered. There's a little lever here. You'll see when you get in. Um, you'll see when you get yours open. It's a bit of a bit of an awkward job. It's awkward to do, especially when you're talking into a camera. This lever here, anyway, you push it up. Ella, shut your face. You push the lever up, and then you can just waggle out the tube. It's a bit stiff, then it lifts off like that. You must be careful not to um, dislodge this small PVC tube. That works the bag full indicator. As you can see, it enters in there, and then it goes up into all the gubbins inside there. And when the air pressure reduces, it um, triggers a little switch thing and uh, makes the back fill indicator light up. Anyway, if you've got a blockage, it's very easy to clear from this. All you do is get something like a flexible curtain pole, you know, for neck curtains, or um, just a piece of wire, an old piece of wire, nothing sharp, and you just poke it through and dislodge any material, or most of it can just be shaken out. Now then, oh, gold. The other place where blockage could occur is in the bellows. Now they're removed, well they're at the bottom. I'll show you. Oh, no, that's not this is not very good, is it? Here, yeah. ah, this is not how I expected it to be. Oop, there it is. The bellows, they can be removed from the base of the bag housing just by squeezing them together and pushing them through. Then you can release the handle down to its low, um, low furniture position and the bellows come out like this oh it's not very good is it? oh bugger oh missus here there that's the bellows as I said I've never had a blockage in my vacuum cleaner because unless you pick up massive bits of material it's, it just won't block. The hose could block here. Oh, bloody hell, I've messed up my jeans now. Right. But as I said, a blockage is not something that will really occur. Unless you can prove me wrong. But under normal condition, if you look after your cleaner, you'll find it uh, won't do you any harm, if you know what I mean. Right, I'm just trying to put the bellows back. You have to seat them at the base of the bag housing, making sure they're incorrectly, otherwise you're going to get dust leaking out. That's it. No, it's not. There we are. Then all you do is put the tube back in, wiggle it about, until it's seated and then you have to just push it back in lift up the lever that's it 
So all that you can do without using any tools whatsoever. Back goes the bag. And while you're at it, you might as well put a new bag in. Whoops. This is awkward as well, putting the bag door back. I find it's easier done in this position where you can locate it here better. Right, now the next job, the really main maintenance thing you'll have to do on it is uh, change the belt. Now it's very rare that the belt should snap, but it does stretch and you'll notice it doesn't brush the carpet and beat the carpet as efficiently as it used to because, mm, I don't know how to describe it, but the belt isn't, as, isn't pulling as tight on the agitator it's slightly slack and so it's not the motor is not really doing its job efficiently right we have the underside of the cleaner here I don't know where that's come from muck's falling out all over the place right for this job I think I'm gonna have to move the camera It's very professional. Right, this of course is the underside of the machine. That's the agitator that does all the work. Now all you need is a Phillips Posi Drive screwdriver. I've got one here. Ooh, that's a big one, isn't it? This is a special one. And it's the only screwdriver you can use to open up a Hoover Junior to get at the motor. I always wondered how on earth to get the motor out and I ruined several uh, Juniors in my attempts until I realised, well, can you get a long handled posi drive? And yes, of course you can and it's done. Right, underneath here there are three screws, one at the top, one here and one here and all you do is undo them. Should have had one I uh, prepared earlier, shouldn't I? Right, there'll probably be a bit of muck in here, so it's ideal time to clean that out. Right, put the base plate to one side. I'm looking at the bloody mic thinking that's the camera. Anyway, you can't see my face, can you? So, that doesn't matter. Right, Ugh. bit of muck there. Dog ears. You'll find that's, that's the case. Now, to replace the agitator, you have to replace the whole thing when the brushes wear down. But as I said before, they do last quite a long time before they need replacing. And the way to test if they need replacing is um, to put a piece of white card up against the cleaning plate nozzle. And if the brushes don't touch it, then of course you need a new agitator. To move the agitator, you just pull it. So just grab it either end, ease it out, and just remove it from the belt. If you just wanted to replace the agitator, you buy this complete with the end caps. It comes complete like that. And so all you do now, in this case, clear out this rubbish here with a duster. And then all you do is just slot the agitator through the thin belt at the front and push it into place. You'll see that there's a certain way it goes in. It won't just go in anyway. There are two cutouts either side here. One sort of a half um, moon shape and the other is sort of a little rectangular shape. And they correspond, you can just see, get it in the light. Can't really do that. Well that's the rectangular shape anyway. We have a round shape there that fits into the half moon and of course it's important which way it goes because this slot here is for the belt and if you put it that way then you've got nothing to put the belt on so I mean it's easy changing the belt is pretty hard and it needs a bit of strength the first belt comes out quite easily all you do is just ease it past the, the pulley now this is a small belt, 
depending on um, if you've changed your belt before, the first cleaners just had a little flat belt, but now the newer ones, like it doesn't show up on camera so well, but they have little teeth that uh, provide greater grip. And it's always best to change both belts at the same time. Here's the main drive belt. Um, there's a spindle there from the motor and there's a pulley system here. So when you've got it in cleaning tool mode or hard uh, floor mode, it's working on the pulley. So this, this, this pulley here, so this pulley here uh, is stationary, which means the agitator's stationary. To move the main drive belt, you need to ease it off the pulley unless it's snapped. That's not a regular occurrence. Ease it off the pulley at the back here, then all you have to do is slide it out like that. Now that's quite easy to get it off, but getting it on is another matter. Right, imagine these are a new this is a new belt. And if you compare a new belt with the old belt, you'll see the old belt looks a lot longer because it has stretched with time. Right, so now you've got to get your new belt onto your rear spindle and your front pulley. So again, you thread it through at the front. And now comes the very tricky bit. I mean, it's not so bad now because this is an old belt. It won't be so tight, but a new belt will be a lot tighter and you have to really pull I mean it's very hard even for me and locate it on the spindle then just turn it with your hand just to make sure there's nothing jamming and then the second belt that's quite easy just slot it past the pulley I said it was easy but God. There we are. Put it on the pulley there. Then you've got to put the agitator back, so just slot the small belt and then you hold it in front of the agitator and just slide the agitator into position like that. And then when you've done that, just rotate it by hand and just check everything moves properly. Oh god, I was going to show you how to change the, the headlamp but this is already so boring for you, I'm sure, that I won't. But all you do in that case is remove the agitator as I showed you earlier and there's some extra screws to undo. There's one here under this hole. There's one over here and you'll find there's one here and here. So there's four screws to undo. So all you do is undo those four screws, turn the machine over onto its um, front, the motor hood will just lift off and underneath will just be a little bulb and that just pulls out when you just slot the new bulb in. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. And then reassemble the hood and uh, put everything back. Now that's working fine, that's going around properly. To put the base plate back on, there's some lugs here, one, two, three, four, five, six lugs that stick out. You can't see them so clearly on the camera. And there's a lip at the front of the nozzle plate. And you have to insert the lip underneath the lugs and then push it back down, ensuring it's correctly, correctly located. Then all you do Let's put the three screws back. Now don't don't tighten them all up at once. Just loosely tighten them. And then one by one, just go around and tighten them again. This prevents any strain on the base plate to prevent it cracking, not that it will. It's just it's the way we do things when you when you when you're putting together any sort of parts like this, it's always best to do the screws up a little by little. 
instead of really tightening up one screw, then really tightening up the other and then the other. Because, well, I don't know, my dad just told me that's how we do things. Now then, that's it. So you know roughly how to change a belt, how to change the agitator, and how to look for a blockage. And of course you'll know when a blockage has occurred, because the either you'll see the red light, the bag full indicator light will come on, or the 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 what the tone of the motor will change. It'll be a higher pitched noise. Right then, that's that done. Now, if you get a blockage in the hose, which has already come out, that's very easy to to um, remove. Just remove the hose up, and then you can just just shake it to remove any blockage there. And that's another niggle I find with this this method of connecting the hose. It often comes out if you stretch it too much. But that's why the extension hose is useful because it prevents you stretching it. But I think. Not this year, but next year, they're going to produce some new Turbo Masters. Because when these were launched, uh, they looked very dated to me. You know? Old fashioned. I want them to produce some really sleek, quiet, upright cleaners. I love these because they really pick up the dog airs, but they're noisy. And I want them to produce something that's much slimmer here, you know, really slim, so it gets under the furniture, and really quiet. So we'll see if this prediction comes true at a later date. Ah, right then. Uh, uh where's me notes? <coughs> oh, God, hello. Hmm. Just looking at me. Me running order, oh hello. Mm. You stink Ellie Pelly. Ellie Pelly with the weather. <laughs> oh. Now we call Ella, we hardly ever call her by her real name, Ella, we call her Ellie Pelly. <laughs> Our favourite one is Epe! Epe! And that's how we call her, we call her that's how my mum and dad call her. I think I uh, dubbed the phrase Epe! Which is short for Ellie Pelly. <laughs> we meant like we a pair with welly. That's right, Ellie Pelly with the wellies. <laughs> oh, God. No, I couldn't make the Oh. Come on, look, you're spoiling it all. I'm trying to do this professional. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love you. <laughs> no, oh, God. And so I'm gonna have to press pause, aren't I? Eh? I'm gonna have to press the pause button. And now it's time for a commercial break. Until not so long ago, this was a job for a professional. Sure, you could clean your carpets with a vacuum cleaner whenever you liked, but deep down shampooing needed specialist equipment and a trained operator. But now there's a completely new concept, the three-in-one. For the price of a good quality conventional cleaner, it cleans dry, cleans wet, and shampoos your carpets and upholstery. Hoover Aquamaster is a fully featured suction cleaner that glides through your housework on five easy ride casters for total stability. And a powerful motor provides all the suction you need for even the most stubborn dirt on all surfaces, floor to ceiling. Aquamaster is one of the quietest cleaners available, so you can disturb the dirt without disturbing the neighbors. And there's a deluxe model with an electronic power control so you can adjust the suction for everything from curtains to carpets. 
a unique cyclonic action significantly improves performance. As air enters the cleaner, it's deflected into a spinning cyclonic action which throws heavier dirt particles and liquid to the outer walls of the tub. Cleaner air is exhausted and airflow is improved. It's better for you and the environment. There's a comprehensive range of cleaning tools included to tackle the most awkward tasks. Shelves, furniture, stairs, and behind radiators, and even cars and caravans. In seconds, Aquamaster becomes an equally efficient wet and dry cleaner for everything from blocked sinks and meltdowns to everyday spills. It can even wash and dry your kitchen floor with a revolutionary new hard floor cleaning head, Power Sponge, available as an optional extra. Cleaning solution cuts through dirt and grime and is easily removed by the efficient squeegee, sponge and suction. It's a far quicker and easier way to clean hard floors and they're ready to walk on straight away. But carpets need special care. There are times when thorough shampooing is needed to remove accidental spills and restore the color. Carpets should be vacuumed regularly to maintain their good looks and prevent premature wear. And now with Aquamaster, you can also shampoo them yourself whenever you like. Pour a shampoo solution and warm water into the tank and fit over the cleaner. The deep cleansing solution is fed through a small tube, which is an integral part of the hose, making assembly simplicity itself. The carpet shampoo nozzle is fitted just like any other cleaning head. Switch on and the shampoo solution penetrates the pile, loosening greasy dirt. Then powerful suction instantly removes the dirty solution and returns it to the recovery tank, leaving your carpets clean and dry enough to walk on in minutes. You'll hardly believe the dirt that's removed the first time you use your Hoover Aquamaster. Shampooing upholstery is just as easy with a special nozzle available as an optional extra with Aquamaster S4470. And included with Aquamaster Electronic S4472. Aquamaster is the ultimate three-in-one cleaner, covered by a comprehensive free five-year parts guarantee, fully BEAB approved and backed by a nationwide network of highly trained service engineers. And it's from Hoover, the product of experience. For more details, ask for a leaflet.